It's the most abundant element in the universe and has been around since the dawn of time. It's practically invisible, but it's making itself known in the energy market. It's lighter than air. It makes up two thirds of water. It's hydrogen. Hydrogen accounts for 75% of all matter, but isn't readily available here on Earth. We have to produce it, and whilst that might seem laborious, the stuff that makes hydrogen is in plentiful supply. And the environmental benefit of zero harmful emissions when used as a fuel is undeniable. It is indeed. In fact, there's only one byproduct when hydrogen is used as a fuel, and it's this stuff, water. NASA fuels its spaceships with hydrogen, and the water emitted is so pure the astronauts actually drink it. But it isn't just its availability and zero harmful emissions that make it so exciting. Hydrogen could be the key to storing renewable energy and could therefore change the face of the energy transition. It's a fascinating topic and there is a lot to learn. So Sustainable Energy travelled to five different countries to bring you some of the must-see stories when it comes to hydrogen. Ahead on the programme, reliable renewables. We visit Switzerland to see how hydrogen production offers game-changing storage solutions. Then we fill up on air to find out how a Scottish city is rerouting its public transport system. And then we turn up the heat to see how an Italian company is using hydrogen to keep its customers warm. And finally, a sunny solution. We head to the Golden State to take a look at how solar power could change the face of hydrogen research. As usual, we track down a leading expert on the subject to give us some guidance throughout the programme. I'll be talking to Yorgo Shartzi-Makakis of Hydrogen Europe to ask in some of the key questions we would all like an answer to. But before that, let's find out a little bit more about hydrogen. Hydrogen is thought to be one of three elements created in the Big Bang. It accounts for over 90% of all atoms in the universe, but on Earth, it has to be produced. The cost of producing hydrogen from renewables is expected to fall by 50% by the middle of this century, and that could pave the way for even more green hydrogen. And finally, sales of fuel cell vehicles are booming, growing by around 30% a year. In 2016, 60,000 units were sold. No one likes to see good renewable energy go to waste. That's why a Swiss hydro plant is turning to hydrogen for an innovative storage solution. The town of Aral has been generating green electricity at this hydro power plant since the 19th century. But, as with all renewables, at certain times of the year the amount of electricity generated outstrips the demand for it. This is where hydrogen comes in. If the electricity production exceeds the demand and the capability of the grid, typically uh, the electricity will be cut or just burn somehow. But with hydrogen, we are able to storage and harvest this excess capacity and then use it later on for different applications. Hydrogen is an energy carrier, which means that it contains within it the energy used to produce the gas. It's therefore able to store any excess power that's generated by the hydro plant. In the electrolyzer, we are taking water and with the power we're taking out from the run of the river plant, we are splitting hydrogen and oxygen atoms out of the water and taking the hydrogen and compress it to store it in a tank. The most well-known energy storage system is of course the battery. Those involved with the project at Aral believe that hydrogen compares very favorably to its closest rival. Compared to battery storage, hydrogen has a much higher energy density, which has the effect that much more energy can be stored uh, and used in a particular application. On top of that, the hydrogen storage is much less expensive than a battery storage. Once the energy is stored as hydrogen, one solution is to inject it into the gas grid to be used when it's needed. At Aral Power Plant, however, they have other ideas for it. After the hydrogen has been produced, it is directly being compressed in a trailer. The trailer is transporting the hydrogen into a hydrogen fueling station. This technology is especially good for the environment because hydrogen has no emissions other than water. Besides the environmental benefits of hydrogen being used in the mobility market, 
it also serves a purpose in closing the water cycle. Close the water cycle means that it all starts with water and it all ends with water. And as you can see in the background, you see the, the hydro plant and it starts with the energy of this hydro plant and at the end of that of, of the process you see also water as the only byproduct. Hydrogen production through electrolysis is sometimes thought to be an expensive method of storing energy. But with electrolyzer prices falling, the facility at Arau is proving it's a profitable solution. With this project we have demonstrated that not only the hydrogen production is economically viable, but also technically it, it works. This is not a demo project, this is an economic viable energy cycle. We use the hydrogen and allow a complete substitution of diesel heavy duty vehicles with hydrogen technology. Hydropower is the most important source of renewable energy in Switzerland and now hydrogen is providing cost-effective storage solutions to take it into the 21st century. Yorgos Shatsimarkakis is the Secretary General of Hydrogen Europe. He helped lay the cornerstone for the fuel cell and hydrogen joint undertaking. He was previously a member of the European Parliament for 10 years, winning MEP of the Year in Research and Innovation in 2007. Yorgo, thank you so much for joining us today in Brussels. Now, we saw in that piece there about hydrogen and production and, of course, about its storage capabilities. And the green hydrogen was discussed a lot. But tell me, what exactly is green hydrogen? Well, basically, it's hydrogen stemming from green sources. Mm -hmm. So if you produce energy from wind or solar, turn it into electricity and then turn it into hydrogen, this is green hydrogen. So tell me about the, the origins of hydrogen and of course its uses. Well, the bulk of hydrogen today is produced from uh, methane, so natural gas. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you take natural gas and you crack it with hot steam mm -hmm. into um, hydrogen on one hand and CO2 on the other hand. So mm -hmm. today's traditional way of producing hydrogen has a carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. but as we just mentioned, green hydrogen is produced from renewable sources mm -hmm. without any carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So here you have an emission-free hydrogen that stems from renewable energy sources and via electricity that over electrolysis splits water mm -hmm. into oxygen and hydrogen. Okay. You receive that clean hydrogen mm -hmm. that can really help to be an enabler of a zero emission society. Mm, I see. So why is hydrogen a viable sustainable energy option? We need to have more renewables, but mm -hmm. as everybody knows, renewables are intermittent. Mm -hmm. So they come in, they go out, we need to store them in order to have more stability. Storage can be done by batteries, mm -hmm. by water pump, mm -hmm. but that's not enough. If we really want to integrate all the renewable, we need big volume for a long time and hydrogen is a solution to store this renewable energy. Some of the most common criticisms of hydrogen is that it's expensive to produce, to store and to transport. Is this a fair criticism? It's uh, comparable to the solar industry some 25 years ago, uh, where of course the first panels were very expensive. Uh, but we see nowadays that the prices have gone down. Why? Because of the scaling effect. So what we need is to go for that uh, technology if we decide to integrate it into this energy transition project mm -hmm. that will become cheaper in a very, very short time. Yorgo, thank you so much for that. Stay with us. Well, think you know everything there is to know about hydrogen? Here's one common misconception. You thought you knew? Think again. Myth. Hydrogen is an unsafe fuel. Fact. All fuels need to be handled with care, but hydrogen is relatively safe compared to others. It's true, it does ignite easily, but while burning, it's significantly cooler than fires caused by hydrocarbons or gas. Hydrogen is also over 14 times lighter than air, so if there is a leak, it disperses quickly and mixes with air so fast that explosions are very rare. Vehicles that run on air. It's the type of concept you'd expect from science fiction, but the city of Aberdeen is making fiction fact with its hydrogen bus project. From afar, this looks like a normal bus. 
one that you'd find in any British city, transporting travellers from A to B with a tank full of diesel. But these are not ordinary buses. These are powered by hydrogen, and they've been running residents around the city for the last two years. Well, they're a very good fit for us because we have, uh, we have like many other cities, we have air quality issues. And in particular, as you see behind me, we have a, a very busy harbour right in the middle of town. And, and while it's wonderful, it does give us some problems in air quality with uh, you know, diesel emissions. So we saw that hydrogen buses would help us to tackle that problem in the city. And also, you know, Profile is a very much a go-ahead city in, in the world, and that's very much what's happened. The improved air quality in the city is only one of the reasons why the buses have become so popular. But I have really, really positive response from the public. I think they really like to feel that they're part of this, uh, you know, this change that is going right across the world. But also, they really like the buses because we have no harmful emissions. It's only water vapour, water that comes out of the tailpipe. They're completely silent. They, they operate totally silently. It's a very, very smooth ride, particularly so. A lot of people have said to us it's more like being in a train than being in a bus. And there are certainly people that wait for the other buses, diesel buses, to go past so they can wait for their favourite hydrogen bus. The buses depend on fuel cell technology to work, which is a completely different process to the traditional combustion of diesel that we're used to. Hydrogen enters into the electrochemical cell, where it gets hit into a catalyst and splits off into its atoms, where you have two hydrogen atoms as protons and two electrons. The two protons then go through forwards into a membrane, whereas the electrons cannot pass through this. Electrons instead get fed through a circuit, which is where you get your power required for the bus. The hydrogen itself is produced on site with electrolyzers, which use a DC current to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Despite the complex fuel cell technology, there's something rather familiar about refueling the fleet. The process of refueling a hydrogen bus is very similar to your conventional bus refueling. An earth clamp is used to connect up the earth. You then connect your nozzle, turn that on, go over to the panel, hit start, and the system is then automated. Once the system sees 300 bar in the bus, it automatically shuts down. The driver can then remove the nozzle and be on their way. This particular system takes about 20 minutes, and we fill about 30 kilograms in each particular bus. Such has been the success of the project that other cities in the UK are looking at following Aberdeen's example, and there are even plans to expand it further. We think the sky's the limit. We're looking at cars, we're looking at trucks, we're looking at vans, um, and also we're looking at storage and we're looking at using green energy that we may make ourselves. If we get uh, wind power, for example, in a region, we may make excess wind power into hydrogen. So we have a very, very big future uh, planned out for it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great to be in such a go-ahead city doing these things. Aberdeen is paving the way for other cities to move towards hydrogen fueled public transport, and the Scots' ambition proves that driving on air is no longer just a pipe dream. Jorga, we've just seen there the impact that hydrogen has had on the city of Aberdeen. But how long do you think it will take before hydrogen really hits the mass mobility market? It depends a little bit also on political decision making. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have seen it's a zero emission tailpipe technology, mm -hmm. so pollution is zero. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the carbon footprint is, is very, very good. Mm -hmm. So if politicians really mean decarbonisation, carbon footprint to get out of the scene is important, they have to support these technologies. Mm -hmm. And basically, they have to stay technology neutral, mm -hmm. as battery is also a zero emission uh, technology. What role can hydrogen play in a transition from a carbon to a renewables market? And do we have a cost and a timescale for this? Well, as we know, 2050 is, so to say, the timescale where we have to achieve more or less the zero emission economy. Now, if we see that, we have the option to ramp up an electricity only system, mm -hmm. but that would be uh, a lot of new investment into new grids, mm -hmm. uh, electricity grids or to combine this uh, with using the gas grid. Mm -hmm. And that you can do with hydrogen. What new technologies do you think will have an impact on hydrogen in the future? Well, as we have seen, you receive, you get green hydrogen out of electrolysis. And the uh, machine to do that, so to say, is the electrolyzer. So everything around the electrolyzer, it's basically an old technology, but it has to be improved now uh, in order to go for mass market. This is technology one. And the way how to use green hydrogen 
for the creation of electricity is done via fuel cells. So this is, so to say, the counterpart, fuel cells. So all the technologies around the fuel cell have to be improved. What's happening in the marketplace that makes hydrogen such an important part of its future? Well, basically, it's the integration of intermittent renewable energy. If we really want to go there, uh, we need storage, we need flexibility, and hydrogen is the enabler, if you wish, of a zero emission society. Join us after the break, where we'll be taking a look at how the hydrogen market is heating up and how nature is motivating a revolution in hydrogen production. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.